need to know how to cook a steak in the oven because everyone has an oven and a couple other reasons I'll share as we turn up the tasty. <laughs> in order to cook the perfect steak in the oven, there's a couple things you need to do before you even turn it on. Come inside, let's take a look. First of all, there's a couple racks in here. We're gonna broil this steak and the broiling element is here at the top and it's two metal pieces, circular pieces that come around. We're gonna wanna get the steak as close as we can to that broiling element, about an inch away. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna move this rack right here. We're gonna take it up to its highest setting. Once you've moved the rack, you're gonna to wanna to do like a little bit of a trial run to see how far away that steak sits from the, the broiling unit. And that's really gonna depend upon what type of pan you're using. Today I'm gonna to use this flat cast iron skillet right here. You can use a broiling pan, you can use a stainless steel skillet. Heck, you could even use a cookie tray. It's that easy. Because this and the plate are about the same thickness, I'm just gonna leave it on the plate and slide it in. So here's the steak, there's the heating element. And I'm guessing there's still about four to five inches between that. So we're too far away to get the heat necessary to get that really nice crust. And that's important. So we need to get this steak closer to the heating element. My solution, take a cookie pan, cookie tray, cookie pan, cookie, I don't make cookies. Put it in there. Now, slide the steak back. As you can see, we've now gained a distance of about one inch away. That's perfect. So now we're gonna remove the steak, set it to the side. I'm going to put my cast iron skillet in there and we are going to close the oven, but not all the way. We're gonna leave it partially cracked and I'll get to that more in a moment. Most ovens have two broil settings, high and low. You always wanna go with high. So I'm going to let that preheat for about five minutes. Let that pan get ripping hot before I drop on the steak. While that's heating up, there's a couple other things I wanna talk about. So this steak has been salted for about an hour already. I try to salt an hour, 24 hours advance if I can. Today I only had an hour, so this steak is already salted. But before we start cooking it, there's something we need to do. We're gonna to need to score this fat cap. This is a Delmonico ribeye right here. And as you can see, there's fat cap around the exterior. The same fat cap that we would see with like a New York strip steak. So we want to score that. Otherwise, if we don't, that fat cap is going to tighten up and it's going to cause our steak to curl up and create an uneven cook. Here we have a knife. Turn it on its side and just score it like so. Nice crosshatch pattern makes it really easy. All right, now that we have the steak scored, let's go ahead and get some oil on there. There's a lot of different oils you can use, of course. Anything with a high smoke point. Today I'm using olive oil, not extra virgin, olive oil. And this is a key distinction in what we do in broiling the steak in the oven versus cooking it on the pan. I'm just gonna go ahead and get a little oil right along the surface area of the steak, rub it in both sides. That will help it not stick and promote a nice sear as we cook it on the pan. As this oven is heating, I just wanna share why I'm using this method. One, everyone has an oven. You don't need a grill, you don't need any fancy pots or pans to do this. The other thing is, is because this is a thicker steak, even if you try to cook it on the stovetop, it's going to need to go in the oven to cook all the way through at some point. So this is a truly a one-step method, but there is another important distinction. When you're cooking on the stovetop in a pan, especially if you're not using the right oils or butter, you might heat that pan so hot that it's going to exceed the smoke point of the oil. Why is that important? Well, because if you burn your oil, you're gonna end up with a burnt, bitter exterior on your steak, and that is no bueno. So in this case, I've oiled the steak, the pan has no oil on it. It's almost ready to go, and I'm gonna drop it on here in just a minute. All right, as you can see, I'm starting to see a little smoke come out of the top, so that means that pan is nice and hot. Let's drop our steak. First thing we need to do is obviously get the pan out of here. Super smoky, look at that guys, look at that. Nice and hot. Next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna drop our steak. And what I'm gonna do on a small pan like this is I'm gonna drop it on one side. I wanna do that so when I flip it, the other side will still be hot. 
Oh, you guys hear that at home? Can you hear that steak sear? That, my friends, is the sound of tasty. Let's get it in the oven. There's a couple tricks I want to share with you from here, so come on in and take a look. The first thing is the placement. So you can see that there's two different elements, both of which have two lines running back. It's not that large of a steak. I don't have multiple steaks. In this case, I'm picking one heating element, and I want to try to get it centered between the two, which is where it is. We're going to close it up, not all the way, leave it slightly cracked, and let that cook here for about three or four minutes. All right, so the steak has been cooked now for about two minutes. I was just talking with the wizard, the guy behind the camera, and he was asking me, do we really need to flip it? And the real answer is I don't know, but I do to promote that nice, even cooking. And for you, meet elitist at home thinking you can't cook a good steak in the oven under the broiler. Just know that some of the best steak houses in the country use this very same method. It's been four minutes. Let's take it out and flip it. Go. Starting to get that Maillard reaction around the exterior. Let's take it and flip it to the other side. All right, so this thing actually cooked way faster than I expected. Right now we're at an internal temperature of about 125 degrees. I'm gonna go ahead and put it back in for another minute or two. Shouldn't take long from here. One thing you may wanna know is why do I keep this oven door open? Well, if I don't, it's gonna shut off that broiling unit and I'm going to end up with a baked steak instead of a broiled steak, big difference. So you always wanna leave it a little bit cracked. As you can see, we're getting some smoke and if you're not setting off the fire alarms, are you doing it right? <laughs> so I'm gonna let this cool for a couple minutes. We'll cut it open and see how it looks. All right, so this steak has been resting for a few minutes. Let's cut it open and see how it looks. So it's not well done. It's not overcooked. I prefer a medium rare, and I would say that this is closer to a medium. So this steak cooked a little bit faster than I anticipated. It took about five minutes total. Four minutes on one side, I flipped it for another one minute, and it was at temperature. Actually, it's just a little bit higher than I, what I wanted at about 135. Now, one thing that you will notice about this steak is it just doesn't have as beautiful of a crust as you would get as like over a grill or something like that. But we don't have to worry about burning it like we would on the stovetop. And overall, it still looks like a delicious steak. Let's find out. One thing I do want to point out though, it stayed even for lack of a better way. It didn't curl up and that's because we scored that fat cap. I need to learn to take smaller bites. That's a skill set I haven't really perfected yet, but this is an excellent steak and one you need to try at home. How do you cook your steaks? Let us know in the comments below. To quote my friend Jack Handy, he says, God lives inside you. Well, I don't know if that's true, but if he does, I sure hope he likes steak because that's what he's getting. I'll see you guys next time.